Okay, so Google Maps sent me down this road minutes ago on a four-lane freeway, but it said this route to Alma, Wisconsin was shorter. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I, I actually like these side roads. You never know what you're going to see. Wisconsin in about three hours shooting eagles here they're a little further away than I hoped it's lock and dam number four on the Mississippi River you can see it right over there and it's it's cold it's 20 below wind chill easy but I want to get closer I can't quite get to the water but I have a long time to try there's a tree just absolutely packed with eagles over here. Pretty cool. I think the latest count from yes or two days ago was about 85 eagles here. Well, that was a little disappointing as far as photography. Uh, it was, of course, clear and 27 below at our house when I left northern Minnesota, and it was snowing down here. But uh, my real goal was kind of an iconic photo of eagles concentrated because of the open water behind the locks and dams on the Mississippi River, where they survive on dead or stunned fish that come through the uh, over the dam
I really can't believe I'm sitting here shooting video of eagles in flight catching fish at this little open spot on the Mississippi River at 20 below zero. Well, I can't believe that, but what I can't believe is I can shoot these guys with the Canon R5 in a 100 to 500 millimeter lens, handheld, 120 frames a second, super slow motion, while the camera is auto-focusing. This is insane. This is like the holy grail. It's fun, 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 fun. And even if the eagle, I set it up so even if the eagle goes behind uh, some branches, it'll stay locked on the, the eagle. <laughs> it's just crazy. I can do it handheld because of the IBIS, the in-body image stabilization in the Canon R5, which just, you know, once it locks on, rock steady. The 120 frames per second at 4K, nonetheless, unbelievable. Also shooting a little bit at 8K so I could punch in quite a bit. And then when I want, I can just switch to stills. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> uh, it's taken a while to learn all the menus, the me autofocus menus, but uh, I'm having a blast. Um, I think I'm gonna have to warm my fingers up a bit, but uh, I, don't, I don't wanna leave. There's adult eagles here now. A while ago, it was just uh, Immies and they're sharing this pool with some uh, golden eyes. They're not going after the ducks, just some small fish. In a quarter mile, continue straight onto Winona Street. Welcome to Minnesota. Scanning for golden eagles now. We're in the inland, in the driftless region. In these beautiful valleys. We drove up Paradise Valley and now we're in some other valley <laughs> but the golden eagles hunt um, mainly wild turkeys in these valleys in the driftless area we have southeast minnesota southwest wisconsin northeast iowa and yeah people didn't know about this for a long time or at least the extent of the wintering of golden eagles here because it's extensive uh, i think they tallied over 80 some this uh, this winter in one count period but uh, no luck yet we're gonna keep driving well this morning uh, we're headed up the Mississippi River to the Minnes on the Minnesota side I was hoping to maybe silhouette or backlight some eagles. I got a little late start and I forgot how far it was from the crescent. But on these trips, you always have something in your mind as the ideal photo. But you gotta be open to what the conditions throw at you. Try and shoot some eagles plucking more fish out of the open water. And this frigid cold weather has really helped us in that and that's why I'm down here it concentrates the eagles in just a few places of open water well lock and dam number five closed for construction so on to plan B well that didn't work out no real access and the alternative spot was all frozen up in front of it yeah with these temps in the teens below zero down here open ice I suppose ain't gonna stay open that long except right at the locks and dams so I'm gonna go back with some springs keep the water open should be more ice proof but now I gotta go another 45 minutes <laughs> before I can start shooting but the Sun is real weak it's there's clouds kind of obscuring it so hopefully by the time I get there it might be a little more Interesting light. Okay, I did not know it'd be possible to be colder than shooting yesterday. Oh, brutal.
Whew. <laughs> Wind is killer. A couple more eagles here at Reen's Landing. And, uh, but they're just sitting tight. When I first rolled up, there was like four eagles flying around. But uh, gotta be patient. All right. And we're gonna end the day at Crex Meadows. Ta-da! Okay, it doesn't look that exciting, but we we're gonna search for snowy owl and snow buntings, northern trike, and especially river otters and golden eagles. Yes, I saw a golden eagle here earlier in the winter, and then my friend Gordon saw one a few weeks ago. Somebody else posted one. So give it a shot. There's a raven. So Crux Meadows was a big sedge plain with uh, huge meadows and uh, bur oak forests that was kept open and relatively tree free by frequent wildfires. But in modern times, of course, with fire suppression, it's taken a lot more work to keep the quote meadows, unquote, in Crex Meadows. And here you can see the oaks coming back after they cleared this area, probably just a few years ago. I saw a grand total of, I think, six ravens and uh, one bald eagle, which was about a mile away. So, but that's how it goes sometimes. And with, you know, what is it, 10 below zero and uh, 10 mile an hour wind, Makes 20 some below wind chill. I'm not surprised. Sun's about to set. I just scanned looking for any fox or coyotes. Um, and the bonus of the Tufted Titmouse in the old Frontenac Cemetery. Uh, two titmice. And they're rare in Minnesota. And that was my first time I ever got a photo of them in Minnesota. And I haven't seen one in probably 30 some years. So that was pretty cool. That might be even one of the highlights of the trip. But, oh golly, I am getting numb, so I am gonna head home. And it's Valentine's Day. And I gave Bridget one of the greatest gifts a husband could give his wife of 14 years. A day to herself since I was gone all day. Plus a chicken magazine. And some a bunch of heart-shaped pecan praline chocolate things. <laughs> Okay, I know I just said uh, I kind of wrapped everything up, but I was just a couple miles out of Crex Meadows when I saw something run across the road and I could have swore it was a fisher. Uh, I don't know. That's what I would have called it with hardly any, any doubt, but I pulled over and like I usually do, I started squeaking. <laughs> What comes out of the woods after about 30 seconds? A gray fox. And they are tiny, they are small. And I got three really crappy photos. And it was gone. I mean, just vanished. And so I started squeaking again. And I see a fox running towards me. I'm like, oh, here it comes back. But it was a red fox. I'm like, what? I'm like, did I just think I saw a gray fox? Because like no time had elapsed, so I did no time to check my photos. Well, <laughs> this fox came really close. Uh, you know, I took some video and photos. They're not good, but crazy, crazy. And then I checked my photos, and sure enough, the first one was a gray fox. Uh, I mean, I'm not too disappointed I didn't get good photos. You know, the sun's already set. And, and I have some really nice gray fox photos taken at the Welcome Center in Sac Zimbog six, seven years ago. But yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> uh, fun sighting. So, uh, not a fisher. Gray fox. And then a red fox. Alright, that was a nice way to end the trip. I'm just ending my quick two-day trip to southeast Minnesota, southwest Wisconsin, and Crex Meadows. It was fun. I found some new areas that I, I didn't know about for photographing eagles. And uh, got some good stuff. I don't know. We'll wait till we see on the computer.
thanks for joining me. Take care. See you later. <laughs> Stay warm. <laughs>